Hi, I'm Sophie Charlotte. I have bipolar disorder and today I want to talk about my experience with venlafaxine or Effexor. What is venlafaxine? Venlafaxine is an antidepressant um, and it's known as an SNRI. I would say the whole name, but the amount of stutters I've just done over it, I'm not putting it in. It became available in the UK in 1995, so it has been around for a while. Mainly used for depression, but also it can be used to treat anxiety and OCD. Not only that, it can be used for bipolar depression when used with a mood stabiliser. What is the usual dose of venlafaxine? Now, with venlafaxine for depression, you're looking at anywhere between 75 milligrams and 375 milligrams. For anxiety, it's very similar. It's from 75 milligrams to 225 milligrams. For panic disorder, it can be anywhere from 37.5 milligrams to 225 milligrams a day. What side effects can you expect from venlafaxine? Common side effects include headache, nausea, sleepiness, sexual dysfunction, dizziness, sleep disturbances, hypertension, postural hypotension, which is where you kind of get lightheaded when you stand up or change position if you move too quickly. You can sweat a lot more, you can get dry mouth, and you can also have insomnia or constipation. It's pretty much similar to a lot of other medications out there in that it's very varied on what can happen with the side effect, but it's pretty much the same with most medications that you're kind of looking at. They all have very similar side effects. What did I start taking it for? I started taking it for my bipolar depression. Um, nothing else was really cutting it for me. I I'm also on Lamotrigine, which was great, um, and I still take that, and it's, it's brilliant for me, but the problem was it was stabilising me, but just stabilising me low, so I wasn't having as many like mood changes or episodes, but I was just feeling constantly like a low-level depression, not severe, but just kind of like a low, moderate sort of level of depression. And personally, I take currently 37.5 milligrams in the morning at 7 a.m. How has it been helpful to me? So it's treated my depression really well. I was on 150 milligrams, but I was experiencing some sort of symptoms of hypermania. So when I spoke to my doctor, we started changing that. Um, I was on 150 for a while. Then we went back down to 112 for a little while. My symptoms of hypermania was still weren't improving. So we went down to 75 and now I'm at 37.5. Now for me, the hypermania it didn't really, I didn't think the venlafaxine was really doing much for that. I know it can cause it, um, which is why we didn't want to, me to go on too high a dose, just in case. But I think the pro problem was it was happening anyway, and I just needed an increase in my aripiprazole, which we then did, and it solved the problem. And with the venlafaxine, I now, although I get breakthrough episodes, mainly of depression, it's not been as severe for me. So again, it's kind of been like a mild depression, as opposed to severe, which is really refreshing. But overall, my experience of it has been positive. I don't really want to come off of it, even though we've reduced it quite a lot. And really, 37.5 is a very, very low dose. Some articles would call it subclinical, where it's not really an effective dose to do much. But I still find it helps me. When I reduce down from 75 to 37.5, it's made my anxiety a hell of a lot worse. I think that was mostly just withdrawal effects. I didn't get anything else, but my anxiety was really bad. It seems to have stabilised now, and I've been on 37.5 for maybe about six weeks now, and it is still helping me, but I'm not really emotional, but I was when I was sort of tapering it down from 75. I say tapering, it was just literally like a switch. And I should also add, I take the extended release, so I only take it once a day, as opposed to twice a day. Are there any side effects that I have experienced? Yes, definitely. My main one for me was constipation. So I have IBSC, which means that it's a bit of a problem for me anyway. And each time we increase the dose initially, it would get worse and worse for me. Now this has since changed when I reduced the dose back down, and it seems to have solved all of my IBS problems for the most part for now anyway it's yeah it, that one's completely gone for me which is really really nice I did also get the postural hypertension I never know if I'm pronouncing that right but that's kind of the way it spells so that's the way I'm going to say it that's worn off that was more initially that I'd I don't stand up too quickly anyway but I just get a little bit of a head rush and I'd sort of have to steady myself because I'd get a little bit dizzy. I did have sort of mild sexual dysfunction, but nothing really to sort of write home about. It was very, very mild. One thing I have experienced a lot was night sweats. So 
it didn't matter what dose I was on or whether I was going up or whether I'd been on it f stable on that sort of dose for for a while I was getting really bad night sweats to the point where sometimes I would wake up and I'd literally be drenched and I might then have to like get a towel or something to sleep on and it was just grim that hasn't happened for a while even though we've got really hot weather at the moment it, it sort of really hasn't for a while since reducing it did have a couple of times but it wasn't nearly as bad as like at the beginning that was really really bad and very unpleasant but f it seems to be something that's quite common when you look um, up side effects online a lot of people seem to have experienced it I've also had very very vivid dreams which I have anyway I'm, I dream a lot and they're normally quite vivid and I'd wake up and be like was that real did that happen or sometimes I'd go to speak to someone about something and then I'm like oh yeah that didn't happen that was a dream because after speaking to people they'd be kind of like puzzled and a bit like what's going on and I'd be like oh it must have just been a dream then they're very very realistic and even now I still get them yes the only other side effect was the increased anxiety when I reduced the dose I'd say I'm still a little bit more anxious now but I'm reluctant to say up my procrabalin to sort of balance out the coming down on venlafaxine I don't really want to do that because I don't want to have to up that anymore and feel foggy and everything like I did the the first time when I started taking that and I could I could just do without that it wasn't particularly fun or pleasant and it would be really bad because I don't work at home anymore and I'd have to drive so that's kind of not an option for me I would say that that is the only real noticeable side effect now or withdrawal effect for me I haven't had anything like brain zaps or really anything else it's just the anxiety that's been really really bad for me and yeah I haven't enjoyed that but I'd say for the past two weeks it sort of stabled off stabled off stabilized um, and leveled off so it's kind of much better now I am I do get moments where I'm still very anxious but for the most part it's there's not much that's bothering me which is really nice that's pretty much everything I've got to say on venlafaxine I actually have had a really good experience of it even though I have bipolar and I was on a sort of like mid dose and then a very low dose and antidepressants and bipolar don't really mix unless you're on a mood stabilizer or antipsychotic but some people can't tolerate it at all there's a lot of videos on YouTube having a bad experience with venlafaxine because it's quite a potent one I mean they all are and they act differently for different people but it seems to be venlafaxine is one of the ones they give you when other things don't work and it's quite strong so I can understand how people would have negative effects from it and it wouldn't fit with them but some people for meds with meds are they have only like a harmful experience and it's better for them not to be on them and for some people they need them and there's no shame in that yeah that's pretty much everything I've got to say um the next video I'm going to do will be on promethazine and I think then I'll start doing the ones I went on previously and any horror stories I have they might be quite short unless I just do a video of all of the other antidepressants I've been on antipsychotics things like that just sort of lump them together because there's a few I was on for a couple of weeks and then I couldn't do it again so I think that one will be upcoming after my promethazine video so thank you for watching and if you have any comments or would like to share anything please leave it below if you've got any video suggestions that would really help me as well I've got a few ideas but again it's how many ideas I can come up with and I will do a diagnosis story video but it's probably going to be very long and it's going to take me a lot of planning to make sure I'm not completely jumbled and just going off on a million different tangents but thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.